Why these people go in their life? They be divide the ocean. Yeah. They just be your pleasures. Yeah. They cause they feel the pressure. Yeah. Oh, this one a bad impression. Yeah. Oh, oh, oh. oh no, this one a bad impression. Oh, no, this one a bad impression. I'm a tough man, I'm a tough man. Plenty young guys don't decide. So come on. Many, many guns, they die, yo. Many, many guns, they rap. Some, they follow dance, I don't live there. Why some, they follow sheep, they go yonder. We got these three big problems. Now who go help us come solve this problem? This thing that they are you so hold now a major problem. About water, light, food, house. We got a water, light, food, house. Oh, Lord Jesus, God Almighty, you know what I'm saying? Uh, good day to everyone, brothers and sisters. Uh, wow, 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 wow. Anyway, uh, this is Mega Comrade Officer Eranomigo Edegbe. I am here in Dallas, Texas, United States. Uh, today, wow, it's going to be crazy. <laughs> it's like every day, the more that I think I have seen it all. Surprisingly, things keep coming up. You know what I'm saying? Uh, I never, I never, this is not what I asked for. But now, there's nothing I can do about it. It's only God Almighty know why he chose me. You know what I mean? So I want everyone to understand freedom ain't free until you ask for it. Until you demand for it. It does not matter wherever you are. When you are being oppressed, constantly oppressed, it's going to go to a time whereby Individual is going to stood up. No matter wherever they are, handicapped, crippled, whatever you call it, they're going to tell you, enough is enough. Enough is enough. So, as everyone understands, I'm not a man who believes in the grammar. I don't give a damn about grammar. I don't care about it. enough of all grammar. You know, grandma ain't going to give you no goddamn J-O-B. Ain't going to give you no job. You know what I'm saying? Ain't going to give you nothing. You know what I mean? Enough of all this nonsense. You know what I'm saying? Here I am. I am planning to do one thing at a time. From one thing to another. Then I'm getting dra dragged out from left and right. You know what I'm saying? So, I want to let everyone know, it's going to be, oh my God, what I'm about to tell you, today's date is July 31st, 2017. Monday, July 31st, 2017. It's after 2, a, a, 2 p.m. in the morning, uh, 2 p.m. in the afternoon here in Dallas, Chicago time. You know what I'm saying? Texas and Chicago time. I want today is going to be in the Guinness Book of Record. It's going to be an history. What is about to go down right now? That is the fact. Today ain't no time for local league. This is no time for all this little rat. This is now we are in a big fish zone. The lions are the tiger. Are on the, are on the ring. It's about to get to elephant. In the room. This is not a place for goat and rat and cockroach. The elephant is already in the room with the tiger and the lion. How is the tiger going to react? As you can see, brothers and sisters, my internet has just been a jack. My internet has just been hacked. You can see my view right now drop. So, as you can see, attack is coming from left and right. But they don't know what I'm going to talk about. You can see right now, my viewer from 100 plus just dropped to 90s. 
So I have to switch my internet server right now. That is to tell you how ignorant can lead a lot of people to commit a felony. Lack of knowledge. They have no idea what I'm about to talk about. They are scared. They don't know. Governor Obaseki is not in my agenda today at all. At all. We have bigger things, bigger than Governor Obaseki. We have a lot of things, a lot of problems now that is bigger than Edo State. This is not a problem of Edo State. Just chill out. This is not a problem of local league. No, this is no state problem at all. Chill out. Mind your damn business right now. <laughs> oh, God. You have no idea. This is a big and major problem. So, as everyone is watching, FBI, CIA, U.S. Marshal, all local and federal law enforcement agency in the United States are watching right now. This is Officer Iranomigo Edegbe, all the way from Dallas, Texas. I am using this YouTube, People's Freedom Movement, YouTube channel, to appeal, I repeat, to appeal to the United States government, most especially United States Senate, United States Congress, and above all, Commander-in-Chief of United States Armed Forces, President Donald J. Trump. I am appealing to you, sir. I am appealing to you once again. I am begging. I am pleading. I understand whatever you are going through right now in the United States. However, I want you to know a bigger problem is coming for you. I repeat, a bigger problem, a bigger challenge. I am so glad I am here in the United States. They have given me freedom. And I will die for this flag right here. I am happy. If I say a bigger problem coming to the president of Nigeria, I will be locked up. They will send a DSS, Secret Service, to my home. Amen. 30 to 40 will be in my home. But glory be to God. I am in the, in the land of freedom. I am in the United States, the home of the brave and the home of the free. The Almighty of all nations. I repeat, the greatest, the best country in the world. Period. No one should doubt it. If you challenge it, ask me. I am a living testimony how freedom is free in the United States. I am appealing to you, sir. President Trump, I need you to call Nigeria government some of them immediately. I want the United States Congress, United States Senate, to immediately find a bill how they can stop Nigerian barbaric leader corruption. Or else, the consequence of being in action will be far more worse than the consequence of being in action. We don't want to hear all talk, no action. I have time for that. You know what I'm saying? I am not here to speak grammar. You know what I'm saying? I am here to talk sense to you, the political highlanders, the political leaders. You know what I'm saying? So, I am here to let you all know that Nigeria is in the brink of war. Nigeria is in the brink of war. You know what I'm saying? Hello. Yeah, go ahead and turn it on my YouTube. YouTube, YouTube, bye bye. So, Nigeria is in the brink of war. The bomb is ticking, it's about to explode. I spoke with some generals in Nigeria, speak some with high rank police officers, high rank law enforcement agency. Everyone knows. When I was in Africa last year, October, my family kept asking me, right from when I was growing up, why are you surrounding yourself with law enforcement agency? Why are you always in the military barrack, in the former Canada brigade? 
Why are you in the police mess? Why are you in the army mess? Why are you in the air force mess? Why are you wasting your money on Nigeria military? Then I let them know. With what I have seen, what I watched my father go through, intimidation, oppression, what I watched my community went through, oppression, what I watched with my entire local government, my county, or my district, what they went through, ain't nothing to compare with what I'm spending. I have a retired uh, uncle, CSP, Chief Superintendent of Police. He always complained to my parents. Your child is wasting money. Why can't he build houses? Why is he wasting it here and there? That's this, that's that. I let him know. A day will come. Where all this money I am spending, giving out, will save me and save my country. They never believe it. So please, today, it has come whereby those things I was doing 20, 30 years ago, 20, 35 years ago, you know what I'm saying? It's not helping me. One way or the other. So the reason, let me quickly address the United States. I am begging anyone, please, any local or national media, CNN, CNBC, Fast News, MSNBC, name it, ABC, C C CBS, whatever you name it, I am begging you, turn your attention to Nigerian government. Turn your attention to Nigerian government. Can you imagine, like we say in the law enforcement, a scenario whereby a hundred and almost a hundred and eighty million citizens are in war? It has no comparison to, to Libya. It has no comparison to Iraq. It has no comparison to Afghanistan. It has no even comparison to even Russia or Korea war. We are talking of almost 200 million citizens and almost 20 million Nigeria are in diaspora. Could you imagine Nigerian citizens, Nigerian sympathizers to their land who are in U.S. military, they are in Russia, Red Machine. They are in Chinese military. They are in European military. The NATO military. If they decided their land is going down and decided to quit your military and fly back home, can you imagine how the land of Nigeria is going to turn into dead body desert? Dead body desert. This is not what I was going to talk about. You can go back and look at my Facebook page. People's Freedom Movement. Hashtag. Enough is enough. Log into the page. You're going to see what I was going to talk about. It's not what I'm talking about right now. That is to tell you. How crucial. How important. The information. I am getting. Information can never go to law enforcement agency in Africa because they understand whenever they speak, they're going to be picked up by secret police. They can lock you up in underground. Ain't no justice in Nigeria. A judiciary system is completely corrupt, crippled, handicapped. Nigeria government is crippled. Is working on life support right now. That is the fact. Nigerian government is on a coma. I repeat, Nigerian government is on coma right now. Ain't nobody in this world that is going to come out. If you call Nigerian government right now, you call Nigerian embassy, they're going to tell you all is well because they have no idea. What they are about to step their foot into. The trap is there. The weapon of mass destruction. Nigeria have been saving. And continue to save. And continue to use it on its own citizens. It has got to a point. Whereby. Nigerian citizens. Are about to explode. And tell the government. Enough of this killing. Weapon of mass destruction, WMD, corruption. 
That is what Mega Comrade call it. WMD. Weapon of mass destruction. Have completely decimated Nigeria. Turn Nigeria into a land of no return. Turn Nigeria into a land whereby the only way Nigeria is going to survive this is division. There's no restructuring. There's nothing for you to restructure. Nothing. I overheard when I call for when I call for change of Nigerian police training. I call for restructuring of law enforcement. February. Everybody thought, oh, look at him. It's in the US. They even call me every name in the book. They call me uneducated. They call me a widow, a widow prostitute. They call me every name in the book. The only thing they have not called me is I have no job. Thank God. I had two jobs when I started this movement. I give up one and freedom for this movement. As I'm speaking to you right now, Sheriff Department are waiting for me. I have no answer to them to tell them why I am not coming to work. If you live in the United States, you know what you go through to be working with Sheriff Department or to be able to be considered as employee to share the department. I'm not going to name them. You know what I'm saying? When you are in training or whenever any of those that work in law enforcement, number one code, do not use that uniform or use the name of your department for any political game or any online game. That is why I never one day tell anyone this is where I'm working. But all I always call myself, I am a security personnel or a detentional officer or a correctional officer, whatever you want to call it. I don't give a damn. But with my security credentials, with what I have learned, both in the school, both in academy, or both even in secondary school, when I was in secondary school, both all the journey I have traveled, what I have learned, have prepared me for today. That Nigeria, as I'm speaking right now, is going down. And I will prophesy today, if Nigeria and United States President, President Donald J. Trump, I will personally come to White House in October. I am going to stage my protest at the White House in October. If nothing is done, I will sit in the hill, in the stairwell of the United States Senate. By myself. I am a tiger and a lion. I go to battle by myself. I don't care if I return, I do not return. I prepare myself down. Every information I have gathered from Nigerian government or from individual, from a dose state government, every plan they have planned is in fire, is in the audio. I kept it for my son. Should the case of anything, whenever I go to anywhere, I don't plan of coming back. That is what I have learned for more than six, seven years. I prepared any way I'm going. It doesn't matter if I come back. I don't care. How many of you can do that? Ain't no one. It's few. Because you all have a stack of money hidden. Stack of women hidden. Stack of everything. I have given up my wife. Everything for PFM. What have I not given up? That is why I'm appealing to the United States President, Donald J. Trump. I repeat, the Republicans, I am begging you. I am a Democrat independent. I can never deny that. I am begging you. I am begging some of the Nigerian embassy and Nigerian president to immediate meeting in the White House. And all Nigerian legislators Governors, senators, Congress, visas should be revoked immediately. Not until they can able to tackle or remove official those who are spreading the weapon of mass destruction in Nigeria, corruption. No one should be allowed. This is worse than Ebola. When Bill O'Reilly of Fast News call on President Barack Obama to halt all West Africans, citizens, traveling to the United States, 
Ah, Mega Combry was one of the first that called on Fast News in New York headquarters. I insulted them as I can. I insulted Bill O'Reilly. I insulted uh, Sean Hannity. Sean Hannity is a coward. I don't give a damn about Sean Hannity. Bill O'Reilly was hiding. I know Bill O'Reilly was up to not damn good. My family are my witness. Some of Nigerians in Dallas, Texas, right here, they are my witness. They know that. They know what I have done. In about 15, 17 years ago, when Bill O'Reilly called Nigerian government irresponsible government, I was angry. But I never knew that Bill O'Reilly knows a lot that I didn't know then. Everyone that lives in the United States knows who is called Bill O'Reilly. He was one of the mega voice. When you talk of the most powerful media man, Mogo, is Bill O'Reilly. Ain't no investigation you're going to do that Bill O'Reilly have not done against me. Ain't no investigation you're going to do that Sean Hannity have not done against me. When I was supporting Senator Barack Obama or President Barack Obama, even during the time of his re-election, there is no investigation they did not conduct on me. They came out short. Zero. Nada. Clean. White as snow. That is the value I have carried. And that is the value I transfer to my son. Who happens to be in the United States military today. Which I am proud of. I like to call myself an old man. I grew up with my old daddy, my grandparents. What I learned today, what I learned for a couple of days now, is like what we call classified information in the United States. Most of them will die with me. Most of them will be left for my children. And most of them will go on public. I am begging Nigerian citizens. I am begging Nigerian youth. If you think Iranomiho is just doing the talking, don't mind him. This is not a business of Edo State anymore. This is not all about Benesiti. It's not all about Obaseki. It's not all about Oshomule. It's bigger than Oshomule. It's bigger than Obaseki. It's not all about rat and cockroach. Not even this uh, useless uh, as we I was going to talk about. Or oh, that small boy, uh, uh, Saturday Wilehue. This is not NDDC. You know what I'm saying? When they hack my internet, I cannot see whatever you are writing. They hack it and it kind of helped me in another way. So whatever you are writing, if you are cursing me, I don't see. So that's good. When you hack sometimes, when you try to punish me, it turn out helping me. So I want you to share this video. I want you to share it because what I'm about to talk about I am begging America. I know I keep calling America. The British have failed us. They have not only failed us one time. They have failed us multiple times. And I want to appeal to Italian government. Please. If there is any way you can help Nigeria. I understand how Italian government help Ghana. Ghana when they were in the brink of sinking. I am begging the European Union. I am begging you. I might be nobody to you. But I understand one day, you're going to remember a man from nowhere who stood up and faced the almighty, the political criminals, the cartel, the assassin, the murderers, those that spread the weapon of mass destruction. He single-handedly faced them. I have called on FBI multiple times. I have my record with the Federal Bureau of Investigation. FBI cannot deny the cry I have cried to them. The FBI cannot deny the information I have given to the United States Embassy in Nigeria. If they failed, if they fail to yield to my calling, they have themselves to blame. I took an oath to protect this nation. That is what I stood for. 
However, I know where I come from. And I have obligation to do whatever it takes to protect my motherland. Now I see it is going down. Where are the Niger debtors? Who is speaking? Nobody. But People's Freedom Movement. The most powerful movement in Africa, as I'm speaking. The most active movement in all Africa, as I'm speaking. The most best, no violent movement. We have never destroyed any one single government property in the whole world. We have never created a chaos to nobody in the whole world. We are the one that is being attacked left and right by Nigerian government. Powered financially by a do state government. The Enigis, the Igwes, the chiefs, all the others, they all turn a blind eye on this threat coming. Some of them insult me. Some of them call me, I don't know what I'm doing. They are all waiting for me to be assassinated. It's never going to happen. Assassination is not my portion. It's never going to happen. Anyone who planned evil, who heard about where they were planning evil against me and my People Freedom Movement members. Before they even carry out the operation, they will be wearing black on black. They will die by motor accident. They will sleep, they will not wake up. Their children will continue to die. Their family will continue to die. Because all we have our vision was a betterment of our country and all Africa and spread across the globe. The Europeans are not happy. Immigrants invading their country, they are not happy. Imagine if we were there, we will not be happy as well. Let's call it spade a spade. We are not going to come here and sugarcoat everything like it's all well, all good. Oh, it's all roses. There ain't no roses. You know what I'm saying? Nigerian law enforcement agency have completely become Nigeria law enforcement of weapon of mass destruction. And before I... Oh my God, Jesus, Jesus. You know what? I'm not going to talk about that. I will say it at the end of the show. I have important thing. Let me quickly go to this. I want to ask all Niger debtors, citizens... As we understand, we think Nigeria can be united. I am not for division of Nigeria. I am not. However, I am not for oppression. Anyone that is being oppressed, I would be against it. And I, we and my movement will be in solidarity with any movement or any tribe, any organization that is being oppressed. One thing I understand, I will never put law into our own hands. I always respect the law. I have been on the side of the law. And I can never be cornered to any courtesy. As you all know, I am not a part of any courtes. And I will never be. It's a vow that my father told me before he died. And I promise never to do it. Home and abroad. That do not withstand or prevent me from protecting myself. In any way, I can do it. That is the fact. And I want to appeal to my Yoruba friends. As you are watching, sometimes common sense is not common. I want to appeal to my Igbo brothers and sisters. And my Yoruba brothers and sisters. A lot of you are watching. Some are generals in the army. Or Nigerian military. Air force. Some are high-ranked police officers. And you are watching. I understand that. I want to appeal to my Fulani brothers. The good one. Not the Fulani Boko Haram headsmen. The good Fulanis. 
the answers, good ones. I want to appeal to you. As a man that was born in Benesirin, I was born in Edo State, the found Bender State. And one thing that I learned when I was growing up is how you can protect your land. No matter however, no matter how you're going to do it, Lord Almighty, you know deep in my heart right now, you can see it. Blood is flowing in my heart. Tears is all over my face. What I'm going to let all Nigerians today to understand, there is no man that is stronger than any other man, except you allow them to oppress you. Ain't nobody. If I was in Nigerian armed forces today, my lowest rank would be corner in the army. All my mates that went through, when I left Nigeria, they are corners and brigadier generals in the Nigerian armed forces. I want everyone who is watching to know that if I was in Nigerian armed forces today, I would, my lowest rank would be corner. And that is the fact. With my brave and the ability to know what is right and wrong, I might be a general, major general, now. However, corruption destroyed my dream. And I still thank God Almighty today. I am still part of the security agency. I know how much I fought so hard to become what I am today. How the hell do you think? A little chicken. Rat. Nobody. <laughs> you have no idea what I've went through. You have no idea. I have walked in the valley of death. I have seen the devil. I have looked at death eye to eye. I have smelled heaven. Three times. I smell it. I live it. I feel it. Three days. Heaven, I repeat, of which I understand when I go back, I'm going back to where my grandfather is. Exactly. Again, heaven, not air. So I want to call on all Edo Highlanders. I'm not going to call on Edo National Body, ENA, whatever they call them. I call it a useless organization. ENA. Edo Association in uh, Edo State Association in U.S. Canada, a lot of good guys are there, but most of them are those who does not give a damn about nobody. I know them; they know me by name. Uh, anyone that said they don't know me by name, they are lying. I make my name back in two thousand and four, two thousand and two. They lying. They know me. So as they all of them want to sit and fold their hands. And watch why I walk the walk. Why my movement walk the walk. But when it's time to rip, they will come out. I tell you, brothers and sisters. <laughs> NC, NC. No contribution, no chopping. If you ain't a part of the struggle, you ain't going to be a part of the government. It is time. Those so-called professor, I'm not a professor. I don't have masters. They even call me a primary school. I don't give it then. Whatever you got, then call me. I don't care. Those that always tell me, don't call, don't do it. Your children don't even speak your damn language. They don't even understand. I try as much as possible to speak our Nigerian broken. Your children does not even understand it. So how the hell, they don't even have time to play game. How the hell are you going to come in the name of my children and watch it? Then you try to take the only power I have, which is cause, insult. I have no gun. I have no weapon. I have nothing. The only thing I got is my mouth. The other day when I tried to speak, a lot of messages were coming to me. Sir, turn down your English. We can't understand. I understand. A lot of them can't know that they don't understand what I'm saying. But sometimes it is difficult when I talk faster. They are all educated. Education, people does not understand the meaning of education. Education does not mean when you go to school and buy a pamphlet and have a, uh, what they call a bachelor degree or have master in any courses that make you educated. No. You can be educated in any different way. 
That is why in America, they will tell you before you join United States or uh, U.S. Marshal, either you have bachelor degree or equivalent experience to bachelor degree. Do you think Americans are stupid? No. They knew when you have equivalent training to bachelor degree, you are more likely to be hired than those that just came with a BA bachelor degree and want to work. When you want to work, when you want to go into sheriff department, they will ask you, your a high school diploma must have law enforcement or security experience one or two years or equivalent. You know what I'm saying? So Americans are not stupid. When I heard when people were criticizing someone said about, oh, those that watch TV in America are more smarter than those are masters of doctorate degree in Nigeria. I never agree with that guy, but sometimes what he said is true. I have a friend who has a master degree right now from University of Benin. From University of Benin. Not one, not two. He did not even make one WAC. One P. Pass in WAC. I have... I have a sack, you know, white paper sheet. I have it. All these people, them all that are in the power right now, they have no, they have no one, no one pay, not even credit. Two years later, he has four, seven A's. I say, what the hell? How did you get it? Oh, this is how we get it. We go to village school, private school. Oh, people like my friend Kennedy. It's very smart. How many guys has he helped to get work? They are in Unimed. They graduated. They are in uh, Unilag. They graduated. They are in Ekmoma. They graduated. You see a student with 10 A's, 7 A's. He, that, he cannot even do anything. Then you question yourself. How the hell this student? It, how can a lawyer? I, you are a lawyer. You study law. You don't practice with law. You are a lawyer. You don't know what is going on. How can a police officer will say, oh, I, am a B I have a BSc in University of, of Lagos. When a, a client or a, uh, what they call it, or a suspect come to your station, for you to write a report, you are telling the suspect, you write it by yourself. Do you think police, they are stupid? No. Because he know he or she cannot write it completely. He cannot. But he want to throw his job for a suspect to do it on his own. In America, police write your report. I don't know about Europe. Where I work in the jail, I write my report. My preamble, everything, I do it on my own. My superior officer does not write it for me. If it's not, if it's not in black and white, it didn't happen. So when you hear some, that's why you see, I respect some, some scholars in Nigeria, scholars in abroad. But when you come up with that attitude, you want to tell me, oh, I am a professor. I say, sit your ass down, man. Come on, sit down. Bring, bring yourself down, man. You ain't nobody. Where are all those professors in Nigeria that are now? Where are all those master degree holder, double degree holder? Where are they in Nigeria now? Where are they in Igbo before Nandikanu stood up? Where are they in Arawa Republic before Arawa youth stood up? Where are they in Oduduwa land before Oduduwa youth stood up? Where are they in Niger Delta now? They are missing in action. They are missing in action. Nobody want to die. It's not that they cannot speak. Some of them are good in English. I never stay in English class. I don't care. I got my English before I even finished my high school. Because I went and did, when I was in class four, that is when I write my work, my GCE. Ask my father. I wrote it on my own. So I already have, I already get my English. I always tell my English teacher in school, I don't care about your English. I already have it. I'll walk out of the class. Right from time, you can't intimidate me. Ask anybody. I'll walk out of the class.
So, brothers and sisters, let me just, let me just, please, let me show you something. There's something that I saw today. Let me leave that one aside. I'm going to talk about it later. Let me just go ahead and show you. It is good to see this. This one, after this, I have a lot of things I'm going to say. There's this thing that is going on in Nigeria right now. Look, let me see when I'm going to start it. Uh, it's going to start from a level. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ, help me. Why does it have to be an amigo alone to be doing this? Or oh, People Freedom Movement. All my admit, they are worn out. All this irrelevant cockroach matter. They are coming there disturbing us when we have a bigger problem ahead of us. You know what I'm saying? They can't do nothing. They are losers. They don't have a job. They are not ashamed of themselves. Okay, I want everyone to listen to the A lot of things I've seen this, but this is not the problem. I will tell you the problem. Be patient. Democracy itself has become an element for all forms of crooks and criminals to seek legitimacy to continue to rape the people and steal their resources in the most brazen, inhuman, primitive, and callous manner. A developed country can never emerge out of the carriage of elections for, for <clears throat> form and content of Nigerian version of representative government. That we hereby and here display the proposed flag of the Yoruba nation as a symbol of mobilization of our long sovereign people out of the huge slum and prison called Nigeria, a country built and sustained by corruption, bloodshedding, malicious damages, and total content for humanity. That the entire proposed Yoruba nation lies almost completely within the trough encompassed by the River Ninja to the north and east, River Volta to the west, and the long stretch of the Atlantic Ocean to the south. This geographic space more or less roughly describes the totality of the area occupied by Yoruba people over the extent of... Okay, I pause right there. I pause right there. This is why I apologize to the Yoruba brothers and sisters. I pause right there. <laughs> this is the problem. Why do you want to leave Nigeria? Because of weapon of mass destruction, corrupt. Here you are, you are declaring Yoruba land. The day one video of your declaration, you are already practicing corruption. This guy right here, I don't know your name. You know me. I am from Oduduwa land. And I fear no bagger. You know me. How could you? You want to divide Nigeria. You know what I'm saying? You want to divide Nigeria. You want, I'm not against oppression, uh, what they have done to you. Fine, you have every right to leave. But you, your reason is because of weapon of mass destruction. Number one killer. Number one killer of any WMD I've ever created by mankind. It doesn't matter the almighty American military, the red machine of Russia or China. The highest killing weapon is corruption. Corruption. Grand Zero, Abuja, Kat and Chitat, capital of Nigeria, government. You want to live there, then you are claiming from the sea, Lome, all the way to River Niger. Who the hell is this boy? Does he know what is called history? And they say they are educated. I read history in school. Do they hear about Bini, Bini Empire? We own the land of Yoruba. The Edo own it. We allowed you to have it. Because our Edo people, we are most, all of us, we are sellout. A lot of us. We do not value ourselves. Because of Wayo GBT, sellout. Only me go be in power in Benin. I'm speaking Nigerian right now. That is why we continue to strength, 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 strength in Benin Empire. And if we are not careful, we're going to shrink her more than what we are right now. I predict it today. Very soon, the essence, they do not. We said they want their own state. <laughs> you think I'm laughing? Ain't no laugh. That is Oshomule agenda. He's bamboozle. He want to bamboozle everybody. He will declare himself the king of Asian land. 
never fight with a short man. Short men will come with everything they have. As big as you are, you think, oh, I can destroy him. I can do this. Look at it, Pastor Osage Zeyamu. Almost seven feet tall. How can a little man, not even body, short and skinny, ban him from even making a rally in a do state not government stadium? That is to tell you the power of a little man. Don't mess with them. That is one thing. Then this little man in Yoruba land is declaring his Yoruba Republic. Ududuwa Republic. You are claiming from Asaba all the way to worry because you want to die in Oye. Let me tell you, Oye will kill you. You are, let me tell you, ain't never a time Yoruba will cross. We cross Ore. If you are lucky, I'm telling all my Yoruba friends, if you are lucky, we allowed you to carry Undo because we are brothers. I want you, whoever do the declaration, go back and reconstruct your word. Don't even dare try it. If no man can speak in Benin, nobody can tell you what you are doing. They think they count it like a joke. Ain't no joke. I take every threat it's serious. That is what I was trained in academy. I want to let you know now. I want everyone to share this video until he gets to his desk. Until this, my video gets to his desk. You have never been in any uniform. You have never wear any uniform. Not even a security uniform for Nigeria. Not to talk of United States. You have no idea what what you are about to put yourself. Yoruba land does not go to River Niger. Yoruba land stop at Ondo State. Take your Yoruba land. We, we know what they call Midwestern region. Let me let me go ahead. God. Public was to bribe, influence manipulate elections and all institutions of politics and the economy. <laughs> Democracy itself has become an element for all forms of crooks and criminals to seek legitimacy to continue to rape the people and steal their resources in the most brazen, inhuman, primitive and callous manner. A developed country can never emerge out of the carriage of elections for, for <clears throat> form and content of Nigerian version of representative government that we hereby and here display the proposed flag of the Yoruba nation as a symbol of mobilization of our long sovereign people out of the huge slum and prison called Nigeria, a country built and sustained by corruption, bloodshedding, malicious damages, and total content for humanity, that the entire proposed Yoruba nation lies almost completely within the trough encompassed by the River Ninja to the north and east, River Volta, to the west and the long stretch of the Atlantic Ocean to the south. This geographic space more or less roughly describes the totality of the area occupied by Yoruba people over the extent of our known history. This includes stretches of land from the west at the borders of Togo through the Benin Republic to the delta end of Wari in the creeks of the Niger Delta between longitudes 2, de 2 degrees 30 minutes east and 6 degrees 30 minutes uh, east. The upper strip commences from the Atlantic Ocean coastline up to the immediate westerly bend of the Niger River below the confluence, between latitude 6 degrees north and 9 degrees north. That, that we assert our right to self-determination as espoused in Article 3 of the United Nations Declaration on the Rights of Indigenous Peoples, which recognizes indigenous people's right to self-determination which includes the right to freely determine their political status and freely pursue their economic, social, and cultural development. Article 4 affirms indigenous people's rights to autonomy or self-government in matters relating to their internal and local affairs. And Article 5 protects their right to maintain and strengthen their distinct political, legal, economic, social, and cultural institutions. Article 36 states 
that indigenous peoples have the right to the lands, territories, and resources which they are traditionally owned, occupied, or otherwise used or acquired, and direct states to give legal recognition to these territories. We in Yomikom totally agree with the desire and demand of the ego to vacate Nigeria. It is within their inalienable rights to so demand. We shall do all within our powers to assist and encourage the ego to achieve this. In the same vein, we agree that the Arewa groups are within their rights to demand that all ego should vacate their territories within the time frame given. As the deadline approaches, we see the threat being actualized. We also see the quick notice as also directed against the Yoruba people. There are about 6.5 million Yoruba in the 17 northern okay. states minus one. Okay, so let me quickly address that. Oh, oh God, Jesus Christ, Jesus Christ. Number one, we are not going to be Briafa. Not Odudua Republic or Arawa Republic. I am mega comrade officer Iranomigo Edegbe. As a son of Edo land, who happens to come out of Bende State, now known as Niger Delta, we will never be a part or any country that called Biafra or Arawa or Odudua. As I have spoken with some of my brothers today, which in a few days, announcement will be made as the capital in Benin City. I repeat, if there's any division in Nigeria, the capital of Niger Delta will be Benin, as it was stated far back during the Midwestern region. Anything that move past that, a do state or Benin City for not being the capital of anywhere, Iranomigo is not a part of it. Niger Delta belongs to Niger Delta. I myself, if it's left for me alone, like I have suggested to them, I let them know if Nigeria are declaring that now is time everyone to live peacefully. The oppression is enough. Only in Nigeria, a police commissioner, Commissioner Gwandu Abuka, will be transferred from a do state, he will refuse to leave. He will tell his superior officer, I am not coming. And he will be allowed. Where is the law? Why is the law against the poor people alone? So, for that simple reason, I will hereby join those who want freedom. I declare. If there's any division, I repeat, if Nigerian government allowed for everyone to go on their own, I will name or declare it United Niger Delta, and capital will be Benin City. If they want to call it Midwestern region, that's fine. And do amendment, that's fine. But I want Arawa Republic, Brafa, Odudua, to understand, Niger Delta, United States, United Niger Delta, United, United, you see what they call it, unity, I'm all about unity, United Niger Delta belongs to Niger Delta, do not come and spill your blood because of oil, do not come and destroy our home because of oil, do not come and kill our family because of your greed, if actually corruption is the reason why you are hesitant in Nigeria, don't be corrupt to take our land. We are not going to fold our hand at the back to allow you to come and invade our palace. And invade our land. The oppressors have no power to temper with the land of Niger Delta. I am calling on all Niger Delta citizens across the globe fight for your land do not be intimidated don't be scared of those oppressors a man die but one time 
Fight for your land by any way peaceful. You can do it. Get on your cell phone. Get on your uh, uh, internet. Send that message. Do not allow agitators. Those that have the greed to destroy Nigeria. And take what belongs to you from you. For me, I believe in Nigeria unity. If corruption can stop. If the United States and world leader can stop the weapon of mass destruction, I'm for it. So therefore, I want to show you a reason why Nigeria will be difficult to come together. Here is the audio. I, I keep asking, where is this man? Where is this man? Finally, I never knew that it's going to come out soon. I want everyone to listen to this. Bear me and see what is happening in Nigeria. Why Nigeria need to be restructured. Restructured not by Babangida, not by anybody, not by those Alam Bubaka, by the citizen of individual region. That is how it should be. I am Honorable E.J. Agbonyima, representing the good people of Ego Bubaka Federal Constituency and those state. Today, I want to tell Nigerians what is happening in this great country. Nigeria could be a, a greater and better nation if all of us put our hands on that. Here's another expose that the DG Nema is taking Nigerians for a ride. And not only taking Nigerians for a ride, he's taking National Assembly for a ride. He had been invited on several occasions and he had refused to come. Only very, very valuable information that Nigeria wants to know, we represent our very constituency. Nobody's above the law. How can a DG have been engaged less just three months, barely three months? In one month alone, he has expended 30 billion naira of taxpayers' money, your money. He has expended 30 billion naira without recourse. It is our constitution that should guide us, that should let us know how we should govern. And we are here to represent our very constituency. Nobody should accept it. Nigerians are suffering, and those in IDP's camp, they are part of us, they are Nigerians. Money meant for them to coach it, to at least to help them, to get them back to life so that they can live like you and I. And how can a DG, engineer Mustafa, spend 13 billion naira in less than one month? And National Assembly have invited him, and he has refused to appear before this honorable house. Nobody is above the law. I am not above the law. I am not. And he is not either. He must tell us, he must tell this honorable house what happened to the 13 billion, what he used them for. Until proven guilty, you are an innocent. If you have nothing to hide, Mr. DG, he must appear before this honorable house on Thursday. Nigeria desire to know what is happening. Everybody has the right to know how their money is being put into use. And you are not different. So you must tell Nigerians what you use 13 billion naira for. IDP, they are still suffering. 30 billion naira gone in one month, and you cannot tell us how the money was used? Look, Nigerians deserve to know. With the way the IDPs, men and women, young and old, are suffering today, they deserve a better life. It would be a sin to God and to mankind to treat them differently from myself, from yourself. So you own Nigerians. To explain to us how did you spend 30 billion naira in curbing the problem of IDPs? It's just that simple. You must appear before this honorable house to appear on the committee on Nema, 
that oversight everything that has to be done on IDP. That is the act establishing never is clearly stated. You can only spend any money with the approval of National Assembly. And that is called AIE, Authority in Cure Expenditure. You must obtain that from the house where you can spend any cover. But today, you have spent over 30 billion naira of Nigeria's money. And still, we cannot get any result in helping our IDPs who are in various camps in Nigeria. They deserve a better life. They deserve a better life. Wow. Brothers and sisters, why is this man not going to run for a governor? Where was he in 2016? I don't know him. I've never met him. I want his phone number as soon as possible. I want that man's phone number. This is the second time he has came out and speak publicly. He's not afraid of anybody. He says what's come from his heart. So, where is this man? Can anybody inbox me on my Facebook page? His phone number as soon as possible. And let me go to the next. First of all, oh God, a lot of people keep asking me. When I say I spend money, my own money. <laughs> they keep asking me, what do I do with my own money? My own money that I spend here. How are you spending your money? Laugh aloud. I let them know. Example. I don't know who is calling me when I'm online right now. Who, who is this? So, I let them know an example. Nigerian police and the military, whistleblower, at those state. Why, okay, why, why, what are, why are you calling me? I'm online. What is the problem now? Huh? Show. Sure. Okay, a do state police commissioner is an example. Commissioner Gwandu Abuka. Commissioner Gwandu is an example of how I spend my money. Do you think to fight against police commissioner is easy? Do you think to be calling Abuja is easy? It's my money, it's nobody's money. But I have every right not to explain or to explain. But if I can, if you can question me how I spend my money, not your money. So why do you think I don't have right to ask the governor or ask anybody that is spending the public money how they spend their money? That is my money. 97.7 percent. Point seven.